What's up guys, Randish Reviews back here again, and today we're gonna to be looking at my Yugoslavian SKS. I actually picked this up on an online purchase from J&G Sales back in probably like 2011. When I got it, I was really surprised at how great a condition all the metal on the gun was in. But the stock itself, even though it looks fine, it has an issue and that is that it has the most cosmoline in the wood of any stock I've ever dealt with. I've tried cleaning it numerous times. I tried ironing it a little bit to get some cosmoline out of it. And I have got some cosmoline out of it in the past, but if the cosmoline is ingrained to an extreme extent, it is sticky to the touch pretty much no matter what I do. And you can smell it as a very pungent smell of cosmoline. The rifle itself was heavily packed in cosmoline. The bolt, the metal, it was completely covered in thick cosmoline. It took me a really long time to clean all that up and it all cleaned up very nice. So since I really got tired of messing with the stock and trying to get it to the way that I wanted it, I decided to just give a replacement stock for it. So I got this Tapco Interfuse T6 stock and it's been in that for the better part of eight or nine years, something like that. I've been thinking about it and I want to give it another try to put it back in its original Original military configuration because that's the way I would rather have it plus it'll take up less space in my gun safe. Take a look at the rifle itself. There it is. It's safe of course. We have the action lock back there. All the metal on the gun is in very good condition. We have the front of it here. It has a blade bayonet and it has your attachment for a rifle grenade which is pretty cool. It's nothing special but I quite like it. Our main focus on this is going to be the stock. So there's a couple methods to remove cosmoline that most of you have probably heard about and I've looked into it and use them on other guns. But sometimes you'll try to iron it out where you'll take some paper towels and put it on the stock and then get just a clothes iron, put it on there and try to steam it out to heat the cosmoline so it comes to the surface. That is a very long process and very tedious and I have done it just a little bit, especially to the bottom part here. But when you get around where you're in a lot of curves and contours of the wood, it becomes quite difficult to do it that way. The second method that I wanted to try that I've never done before, but sounds pretty promising, especially being in Georgia where we usually have quite a bit of sunlight, is to take the entire stock, wrap it in paper towels, and put it in a black trash bag, and then stick that in a very sunny spot to let it bake in the sun for hours. The heating up of it will cause that cosmoline again to come to the surface. The paper towels will help get that off, and then you know you just check it every now and then and wipe it down. That method has worked pretty good for some people in the past that I've seen, and that's what I wanted to try, but of course the day that I wanted to do this, we have overcast, so I'm not going to mess with that today. There's a couple other methods, so you can get you a heat gun, or some people will use a hair dryer, and the same sort of thing. You just heat it up on a spot until the cosmoline starts coming to the surface and then wipe it off with a paper towel. Again, that's a very tedious process because you've got quite a lot of wood that you have to do it on here and like every inch of this stock is absolutely soaked in the cosmoline. The method that I'm going to do is not necessarily recommended by everyone for everyone, but it seems like the quickest method to me and thus I'm actually going to bake it in the oven. So I'm going to put this on a tray. We'll show that in just a second. And I'm going to put my oven at 200 degrees Fahrenheit and we're going to leave it in there initially for about 45 minutes. I'm going to be checking it all the time just to make sure you know nothing crazy is happening but we'll probably end up leaving it in there for a couple hours we'll see how much cosmoline we can actually get to run out of the stock hopefully it'll be a substantial amount so we're gonna cut right quick and we'll be right back in the kitchen looking at the oven this is going to be a couple stage process because as you can see the stock is quite a bit longer than my oven is wide. We've put some aluminum foil spacers between the pan and the rifle there just to be safe. And I do have this side elevated a little bit more than this side. So hopefully our cosmoline will run in one direction and we don't make a big mess inside of the oven. I was actually able to get quite a bit of the stock to fit in there. So that was nice. I was thinking a little bit more than that was going to be hanging off. So it's looking pretty good. Close this most of the way as far as I can basically. Try to retain as much heat as possible. And I'm going to set a timer on this and we're going to let it go just like this at 200 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes initially. I'll be back to see if we made any progress here in a minute. All right, so it's been 30 minutes at 200 degrees. My house is smelling quite a bit like cosmoline at the moment. And you can see it pulling up on the outside of the wood there. So this is working. In just a second, we'll see if we can wipe some of that off. All right, so it is pretty hot. And you can see the sheen to this. That is the oils coming out of it. We'll see if we can wipe some of this off. And see that? It is coming out. I'm guessing this is a little bit faster than doing it with a heat gun, but it is sort of the same kind of process. You're just heating it up so the oils come out and then you're wiping them off with something. I think heating the whole stock at one time, like we're doing here, is still gonna take quite a few cycles to really get all of that out of there. In reality, you could probably even go higher than 200 degrees Fahrenheit. I was just being a little bit conservative because I didn't want to damage the wood or disrupt the heat treat on any of the metal parts that I did leave in here, like the uh, spring here and your sling swivel there. I didn't show it on camera, but I did take off the rubber butt plate 
plate because I didn't want it to be melting. Yeah, that's pretty dirty. It's already pretty cool to the touch though. I don't have to wear gloves to do this or anything. With all the small parts, like down here in the channel where your barrel goes, there was tons of cosmoline in that when I first got it. It was just literally caked in cosmoline. The most I've ever seen on any gun. And I've cleaned up quite a few mill syrup guns. All right, well, all this that is on this napkin here is no longer in our stock, so that's good. At least we are making a little bit of progress. I'm probably gonna do this a couple more cycles today. And we'll see how it goes. I'm going to flip it around and put it back in there for another 30 minutes. We'll come back and take another look at it and see if we can do another wipe down on it. I figure by keeping the oven cracked like this, you're losing quite a bit of heat that you would normally retain if the oven was big enough to fit the whole stock. But this is about the best I can do with the setup that I have. Could definitely be improved upon, but this is a decent way to do it at the moment, I suppose. All right, we're fresh out of the oven for round two. I actually cranked the temperature up another 20 degrees. We did this one at 220. It is extremely sticky now, but it looks like a little bit less oil might have came out of it this time. It's definitely not puddled up as much as it was. The wood is definitely warmer than it was last time. See that coming off. So we still are getting some out using this method. It might have reached its limits though, or either that or it's going to take maybe hours of this. I mean, it's been in here for basically an hour at this point because I've done 30 minutes twice and it's definitely working. I mean, the oil is coming out of it. The cosmoline is definitely coming out. It might end up taking a little longer than I would like and it'll be a little bit more involved than what I would prefer. See that? It's coming out pretty good. It's quite a bit more difficult to handle this time than it was before just because it is so much hotter. The smell that it's emitting is pretty caustic and it is definitely stinking up the house. Good thing I'm here alone today. There's a lot of it coming out actually. I'm pretty surprised. Little piece of paper towel is stuck to the inside of there. We'll have to get that off in just a second. There's no sign of the wood burning or anything, so that's good. Of course, wood's not going to burn really at a sustained temperature of 220 degrees. With that door open, it's probably more like 180 there or something like that. The barrel of the gun, after being fired in pretty rapid succession, gets quite a bit hotter than that, so the stock should be able to easily withstand that. We got quite a bit off that go around. My uh, napkin's not doing so good. I think we're going to leave it at 220 the way it is right now, and we're going to put it back in there for another cycle facing in the opposite direction and so we'll be back with our next wipe down in another 30 minutes. All right we're back for round three. Looks like we're still getting a pretty good amount coming out. I did flip it around so we got the front of the stock. There's actually a good amount coming out of there. I also stood it up on end to try to get a lot out of the, the channel where the action goes. Look at that. There's a lot in there. It's finally starting to come out. Very warm to the touch. Look at all that. It's coming off better now than it was the first couple times. For sure. I guess there was a lot down here on the front end. Down there in the bayonet channel is really hard to get to. And I suspect there's probably a whole bunch down in there. Because the bayonet, yeah, look at that. When I first cleaned this gun, cleaned the metal off, and was doing the initial degreasing, the bayonet was just absolutely caked with cosmoline. I don't know how I'm going to go about finishing this back off if I do get all the cosmoline cleaned out of it. I'll probably just hit it with some linseed oil or something. I might do some gun wax. I don't know. I'm going to try to do sort of a natural finish, though. I'm not going to really be trying to restain it or coat it with anything, like any shellac or polyurethane or anything like that. I want it to be in its nice historical configuration. Yeah, I think this is really doing surprisingly well. It's still just super sticky, though. If you have any suggestions for, like, solvents or anything that would be safe for the wood, that would also help sort of draw some of that out and help me clean it up please let me know all right so we got a fair amount out of there then we're gonna go one more cycle and last time i did it standing up this time i'm gonna do it upside down we'll be back in another 30 minutes all right we just finished up our last 30 minutes in there and it looks like we still do have quite a bit of cosmoline coming out of it i mean i figured you could probably do this all day long and keep getting more and more out of it because it really was just so soaked in cosmoline this time we're going to use some cut up shirt to try to wipe it off Maybe that'll hold up a little bit better than that paper towel was. It was trying to break down and stick to it in some spots. Some of it's showing up on here, but not as much as on the paper towel. No doubt it's still coming off, though. Some of it, even though it was heated up, it's just, like, it's dried on there. That was pretty decent, though. While it's still nice and hot, I'm actually going to give it a bath in some dishwashing liquid and some nice hot water. Back in just a second, and we'll film some of that. All right, so we got the water going as hot as my tap will go. We're going to wet it down and then rub it with some soap, and we're going to scrub it with a scrub brush. All right, that's nice and wet. The wood is still very hot and that water is very, very hot. We're gonna use this brush here with a little bit of dish soap on it. Get that a little bit wet. And we're just gonna start lathering it up a little bit. Right away, our soap is turning a yellowish brown color. So that means that it is getting some cosmoline out of there. A 
There's some more sap on here. Now I cleaned it with dish soap before when I first got it, but as you can see, it didn't do the job that well the first time. All right, we pretty much scrubbed it all the way down, and now I'm doing my last little rinse off, and we'll see what it looks like after we're done rinsing it. Dry all of this water off. All right, and there we are after wiping it down. You can see the overall color of the wood has changed quite a bit from what it initially was. It's a lot more light colored, so that's a pretty good sign. Now you can see a little bit of these speckly type parts. It has some sheen to it, and that is still oil in the wood. That didn't even wash off with my first washing of Dawn. There's a lot there. In some places it looks pretty good, pretty nice and clean and dry, like this part right here. That doesn't have much cosmoline in it at all, but the corners there have quite a bit, and the inside still has quite a fair amount on it. But we're definitely getting somewhere that's looking pretty good all right so i'm gonna wash this down one more time and then we'll come back at the tabletop give you my final thoughts the second washing really helped tremendously you can see a lot of that got taken off when i washed it again and scrubbed it real good now the color of the wood now is much lighter than it was it's almost white it's pretty dry at this point that's probably from the heat that it's been exposed to along with washing it down with a grease dissolving detergent like dawn but that's nothing that a little bit of linseed oil won't fix i'm probably going to sand it just a little bit because the the grain structure is kind of rough on it, and you really couldn't notice that too much before it was dry like this. So I'll hit it with a little bit of sandpaper, but not too much. It can probably benefit from even a third washing, because you can still see some shiny on there, especially on the inside there. You can see there's still quite a bit. So I'll probably wash it again, but I'm done with it for today. I'm just going to let it sit. I did pop it back in the oven for just a minute to help it dry out a little bit more, because I didn't want to store it with any residual moisture, especially uh, in the metal components. It's very important to go back and oil the metal components on here so you're not dealing with the rust in the future. But for what it is, that process that I went through worked out pretty well. I would have liked to have tried to bake it in the sun, but I guess the next best option is just pop it in the oven if you have to, and it does work. It feels completely different than it did. It's lost almost all of its tackiness. It was very sticky before. The smell has improved drastically. Of course, that's in part to having just been cleaned with soap. We'll see what I do with actually finishing this out. I don't know what finish I want to go with, whether it be, you know, an oil-based finish finish or wax based finish. And when I get all that figured out, we'll do a little video of me actually finishing it and we'll see the reassembled rifle in the end to see how everything came out on that. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Appreciate y'all guys checking out the video. If you like it, please subscribe to the channel. I have more gun content on the way. Of course, I'm going to keep doing ration reviews and other product reviews as well. And maybe we'll even get out and do some shooting videos at some point. Signing off guys. Thanks for watching. See ya. Peace.